Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski and this organic chemistry video covers skeletal structures, also known as line angle formulas. This video assumes a basic understanding of Lewis structures. If you're not yet sure how to draw molecules in Lewis structure form, you should go and take a look at that first. Once you know how to draw Lewis structures, you'll be able to understand skeletal structures. Skeletal structures are abbreviated versions of Lewis structures. They appear as zigzagging lines that represent the skeleton of the molecule. Here's an example, capsaicin. It's the active agent, the pungent molecule that's present in chili peppers. This molecule is written in skeletal structure form, and there are a number of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms that aren't indicated. In this video, we're gonna learn how to read this structure and interpret it and convert it to a Lewis structure, and also take Lewis structures and convert them into skeletal structures. There are a number of rules for skeletal structures. Here's an example of a simple skeletal structure, and we'll learn how to convert it into a Lewis structure. The first rule is that carbons are not labeled, but they're assumed to be present at kinks in the structure and at the ends of unlabeled lines. Here's an example of where carbons occur in the skeletal structure on the left. They're indicated by the pink ovals. So if we draw that in Lewis structure format, we're going to draw in the carbon atoms with bonds between them, and these carbons are the carbons that appear in the skeletal structure. Hydrogens bonded to carbon are not shown. These are called implicit hydrogens. The molecules on the left and on the right do contain hydrogen atoms, but they're not shown in the skeletal structure. They exist and they're important, but they're left out for clarity. The way you know how many hydrogens are attached to a given carbon is that carbon has a valency of four. It makes four bonds when it's neutral. You should assume that there are enough hydrogen atoms bonded to each carbon atom to fill out its valency. For example, the carbon in the skeletal structure on the left is making one bond to a carbon on the right. That means it's got one valency indicated. There are three others that need to be occupied. Those would be by hydrogen atoms. Here's the Lewis structure of that molecule indicating all of the hydrogens. Pay attention to every carbon in the molecule and make sure it has enough hydrogens to fill carbon's valence number, which is four. The last rule of skeletal structures is that other atoms are drawn in with their atomic symbol along with any attached hydrogens. So it's really carbons and hydrogens that are left out in skeletal structures. On this slide, we're gonna look at examples of skeletal structures with heteroatoms. These are atoms other than carbon, things like oxygen or nitrogen, for example. We're gonna take skeletal structures and convert them into Lewis structures. Here's an example of a skeletal structure of ethanol. This is ethyl alcohol. It has two carbons indicated by the kink in the structure in the middle and then the unlabeled line on the left. And in Lewis structure format, it would look like this with the carbons drawn in. This isn't a complete structure yet, but it has the carbons shown here. Also, don't forget about the two lone pairs of electrons present on oxygen. So when you're dealing with oxygen or nitrogen or some other heteroatom, realize that these atoms may have lone pairs of electrons, but they won't be drawn in in the skeletal structure. Then we'll fill in the hydrogens that exist to fill out the valence number of carbon, which is four. The left carbon in the structure has three hydrogens, and the middle carbon has two hydrogens. Now I'll remove the highlights so you can see the skeletal structure and the Lewis structure together without all the annotations. Here's another example of a skeletal structure that has a nitrogen in it. This is an amine. This is tertiary butylamine. It has four carbons in it that are indicated here by the pink circles. And in the Lewis structure, those four carbons are indicated here, again, highlighting with pink circles. Notice that I've drawn the lone pair in on nitrogen. Nitrogen has one lone pair. And then each one of these carbons needs to make enough bonds to hydrogen to fill out its valence number of four. So that means there's three CH3 groups attached. This slide has some examples with rings. We're gonna take skeletal structures and convert them into Lewis structures. Here's an example of cyclohexane. This is a six-membered ring alkane, and it has six carbons in it. Carbon is present at every one of the kinks in this structure. These are indicated by the pink circles. Here's where the carbon atoms are located in the Lewis structure. And then each one of these carbons needs to be making enough bonds to hydrogen to fill out its valence number of four. For this molecule, it's two hydrogens per carbon atom. And this is the Lewis structure of cyclohexane. Now again, I'll remove the highlights just so you can appreciate the full Lewis structure and the skeletal structure. One of the things you'll notice as you're going through and drawing skeletal structures and Lewis structures is skeletal structures are just a whole lot easier to draw and they're faster and in a lot of cases they're clearer too. There's a lot less clutter by removing the hydrogens. That's one of the big strengths of skeletal structures. It allows you to appreciate the skeleton of the molecule without getting distracted by looking at all of the hydrogens. Here's another example of a molecule called benzene. This is a skeletal structure of benzene, and notice it has three double bonds in it. The carbons of benzene are indicated here by the pink circles, and in the Lewis structure version of this molecule, those carbons are shown here. To satisfy carbon's valence number of four, each one of these carbons has one bond to hydrogen. 
each carbon in this structure is already making three bonds, so it only needs to make one more to get to four. This is the completed Lewis structure of benzene. And again, I'll remove the annotation so you can compare these two molecules side by side. Now we're going to return back to our capsaicin example and take a look at this molecule's skeletal structure and convert it into a Lewis structure. This is the Lewis structure of capsaicin. It looks a little bit overwhelming, but we're going to go through it step by step to go through which carbons correlate between the two structures. We're going to start on the left and work our way to the right. On the left side of the upper structure, there is a CH3 group, which is indicated in the upper structure by the unlabeled line. That corresponds to the CH3 group in the lower structure indicated by the pink circle down below. The carbons of the benzene ring are highlighted here in light blue. The carbon bonded between the ring and the nitrogen atom here is highlighted in yellow. That's a CH2 group. Moving to the right, the C double bond O carbon is highlighted in green. And then finally, the other carbons of the chain I've highlighted in purple. I'm going to remove these annotations and allow you to compare these structures side by side. The upper structure and the lower structure contain the same information. As long as you know that the upper structure has hydrogens in particular places and carbons at the kinks in the structure and at the ends of unlabeled lines, they convey the same information. The upper structure is just a lot easier to look at and very quickly get a sense of the skeleton of the molecule. Don't forget about lone pairs in your Lewis structures. Each oxygen in this molecule has two lone pairs of electrons and the nitrogen has one lone pair. This slide covers dealing with charges. A formal charge on a carbon atom uses one of its four valence positions. We're going to take a look at examples of skeletal structures with a charge and convert those into Lewis structures with a charge. First, we'll take a look at a carbocation example. Here's an example of a carbocation. This is a carbon-based structure that has a positive charge on one of the carbons. The second carbon from the left contains a positive charge. To convert this into a Lewis structure, we need to know how many hydrogens are attached to that carbon. We need to count the number of valence positions that are being used on this cation carbon to determine the number of hydrogens that are attached. The carbon indicated by the pink circle is making bonds to two other carbons. That uses two of its four valence positions. It also has a positive charge which, according to the rule above, uses another one of its valence positions. That leaves one valence position left that must be occupied by a hydrogen. Therefore, in the Lewis structure of this molecule, the carbon that bears the positive charge has one hydrogen atom that isn't indicated in the skeletal structure. Here's the Lewis structure of the carbocation. Next, we'll look at a carbanion example. This molecule is a four carbon species that has a negative charge at the end of the chain. We need to count the number of valence positions being used on that carbon so we can determine how many hydrogens are present there. The carbon indicated by the pink circle is bonded to one other carbon that uses one of its valence positions. It also has a negative charge that uses another. That leaves two valence positions that must be occupied by hydrogen. So when we draw the Lewis structure of this molecule, we'll draw two hydrogens attached to the right-hand carbon. And this is the Lewis structure of the molecule. Showing lone pairs is usually optional in most organic structures. Technically, a Lewis structure would show all bonds and all lone pairs. In practice, a lot of times lone pairs are left out. They are considered optional. We know the carbon on the right must have a lone pair of electrons associated with it because it has a negative charge. The only way to get the right number of electrons around that carbon to make it negative is to give it a lone pair. Whether you draw it in or not, you have to realize that that carbon has a lone pair. I'll include the lone pair here to complete the Lewis structure. On this page, we're going to talk about converting Lewis structures into skeletal structures. Here is an example of a fairly complicated looking Lewis structure. It has a lot of different carbons and hydrogen atoms. I'm going to present a strategy for converting this into a skeletal structure. It's not the only way to solve this problem, but it will work and it will get you the right answer. This strategy is very similar to naming molecules. If you've learned how to name organic molecules, this will look familiar. If you haven't gotten there yet, it's not a problem. We'll go through each step, and it's simple. The first thing you want to do is find the longest continuous chain of carbons through the molecule. Find a path through the molecule that includes the maximum number of carbon atoms. For this molecule, there are multiple equivalent ways to get the same longest carbon chain, which is nine carbons. I'm going to show one of them here by highlighting the carbons in yellow. Notice the longest carbon chain can zigzag around and take many different paths. It just has to start at one end and end at the other. The next thing to do is to number this longest carbon chain and start at the end closest to the first branching point. Here, the left side of the molecule is the appropriate side to start numbering at because the first substituent comes at carbon number three. If we were to start at the right side of the molecule and work our way to the left, the first branching point wouldn't come until carbon number four. The numbers here in blue are the correct numberings for this molecule. 
To represent this molecule as a skeletal structure, we'll draw a 9-carbon zigzagging chain to represent the main chain here. And I'll number it, and indicate the carbons of the chain with highlighting. To complete the skeletal structure, all we have to do is look at the substituents that are attached to the longest carbon chain. For example, in the number 3 position, there's a CH2CH3 group, which is highlighted here in pink. Translate that to the skeletal structure by drawing a 2 carbon group in the 3 position, highlighted in pink. Moving down the chain at the number 5 position, there are 2 CH3 groups. That means in the skeletal structure, we'll have to have 2 lines coming off of the number 5 position to indicate these 2 carbon groups. The two blue squares are indicating which two carbons are being represented. And then finally, in the number six position, there's a three carbon chain where the carbons are all lined up in a row. So to complete the Lewis structure in the number six position, we'll put a three carbon linear chain here. Shown here in green, we're highlighting that substituent. This completes the skeletal structure. I'm just gonna remove all the annotations now to show you what the two molecules look like side by side. At first glance, they don't look very similar at all. In fact, it's very difficult to tell that these two molecules are the same. However, if you take the strategy of comparing longest carbon chains, each of the two longest carbon chains has the same groups attached in the same places. That makes these two molecules the same. This longest carbon chain strategy is a good general strategy for comparing molecules. It allows you to quickly and easily distinguish molecules that are similar and pick out differences. And this wraps up our tutorial on skeletal structures. If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.